very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Time now to get into matters rugby and of course we're focusing on the ongoing London Sevens and of course the upcoming Enterprise Cup final slated for 4 p.m. East African time at the RFUA grounds along Gong Road. Uh, Sami Muraya and Ngarwa Kamuya are still with us to you know give their perspective with regards to the two events. Sami, of course, fading out there is one man who is in charge of Kenya Rugby Union as the president. That's Jeff Ganglodori. How do you rate him a few months after his election? Uh, well, Gange has not done much so far. Um, I, I think we can uh, say that he's not had the time to do much and we cannot start uh, blaming him now for what he's not done. However, uh, if we look at the promises that were made, because uh, there are election promises, just like there are uh, anywhere else in this country on the political field, when you come up and, and, and promise something, uh, the most important thing is for you to be able to deliver. Um, when he got on board, that's the first time we started seeing senior rugby players boycotting uh, the sevens team um, and most of them are complaining about one allowances two um, the pay was being cut uh, and and the reason that they were being given is because of sponsorship and it's true um, right now not very many corporates uh, want to be associated with the uh, with the sevens team which was not the case before um, I remember um, when, when when Virgin Airlines came on board um, and that's like uh, five or six years no, ten years ago, ten years ago um, and they brought in very good money Kenya Airways had to match up. I actually even better what Virgin Airlines were giving because uh, there was that question uh, and, and that was even coming from the government itself uh, in terms of um, how do you have a, an airline from the UK coming to sponsor uh, the Kenya rugby team. We cannot have um, a Kenyan rugby team that always flies Virgin Airlines uh, to international matches and that's how KQ came in. Um, KQ came in pumped in uh, good money uh, but then of course we know the problems that have been at KQ and they were unable to do it anymore in comes Sport Pesa. Sport Pesa put in over 600 million in, in rugby and, and that was the biggest sports funding that we had ever uh, gotten in the country misappropriation of funds happened um, they had issues with with the way uh, the accounts were being done and how uh, the, the money was being sorted and at some point I remember uh, there's a time uh, that Sport Pesa literally started paying uh, players directly same thing with the uh, Kenya Airways so that uh, tells you that there was a problem at the union because money was being pumped in but this money was not getting to to the players and, uh, and uh, to the officials and that's where the money was supposed to come to, to actually um, get to so now you look at this team now. Um, this team is a team that is full of rookies. I do not want to discredit them because they've actually, you, you can literally see that they are fighting for, for the jersey. But then judging by what has transpired over the last two days, just uh, looking at uh, Dennis Ombachi uh, complaining as well as William Baka. And Ombachi was complaining at, about a time when he got injured. He, he broke his leg when he was playing for the national team. What happened? He was uh, demoted from a first team uh, player to a second tier uh, player and by the time he, he came back he was struggling he could not even pay for his bills and it's not just they know alone it's every player who plays for the sevens uh, team um, it's also everyone in fact I even feel uh, that the, the the sevens players are lucky because they have a monthly salary uh, if you go to the 15th team most of the teams um, local local teams are not paying good salaries and, uh, and 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 in this scenario I'll cite my team that I support Harlequins I don't want to blame any other team um, Harle Kenya Harlequins at some point had very good structures had everything that was working for them right now you go there, you, you, you go to Queens today, you find these players literally begging each other for fair. These are the same players that are playing for the national team. And when they are playing for the national team, they still don't get their allowances on time. Uh, the money that they are getting paid is way too low. In fact, uh, I cannot compare it to even what football players are getting. And football players have always complained in this country. So um, it's about time Gange and his team just sat back, um, relooked the whole structure, and they stopped um, giving these excuses about where the monies are going. Because at the end of the day, you're given money or you have money uh, knowing very well that uh, uh, you have a series that you're supposed to honor or a tournament that you're supposed to honor. You're supposed to, uh, to literally plan for everything. I saw Willie yesterday saying it's really sad for you to take players from Kenya 
put them up in five star hotels and when this guy comes back home his house is closed uh, ombachi was actually saying yeah uh, uh, the landlord is actually seeing you knocking these players out there he's seeing you on tv he believes you're earning money and and it's because that's what is in people's minds that is the perception that as long as you're there you're playing for the national team you're earning some money so these guys are really struggling um and right now i'm i'm actually very sorry to say i i speak to some of the players who are uh, in london at the moment and i know what they're earning it's too little uh, it's even now um, two or three times less than what second tier uh, players were earning a year ago and it's a sad affair and most of these players uh, the only reason why they're actually playing is like a majority of them play for homeboys rugby team and I'm sorry to actually raise that as an issue here so uh, the coach threatens you because he's still the coach of uh, uh, homeboys rugby <laughs> team so he tells you if you don't play for the national team then you won't play for your local side you guys are calling it a spend a spend <laughs> Narwa, it's such an irony because yeah. rugby players most of them are Serious and top-notch professionals, of course, being an expert in various fields. But when it comes to their remuneration, how comes it's it's awful? You know, um, the problem is the leadership. Simple. First, you, we need to understand one thing, uh, and I hear this. I, I hate this argument of in our days. It's an argument you hear a lot with the older generation in our days. First of all, and I'm sorry, and it's going to sound very crass now. There, I'm going to say we really don't care about your days. Your days are done. Number one. Number two. In your days, the people you were playing against were not professionals. They were not full professionals. So don't come and give us a crap about It was sort days. of part-time. It mm. was part-time. Look, now you're asking Dennis but you're asking William Buck, you're asking Collins and Jera to measure up against full professionals. Yet you don't want to pay them. Yet you want them to come for training. These guys, during the Innocence Mini days, you're training for six hours a day. You want these guys to come for training, but you don't want to remunerate them. Yet you want them to compete at the same level as New Zealand, as South Africa. As England, it cannot happen. Now, granted, I like what you say. Rugby has always hired professionals, and you can do it. It can still happen. People like Africa Yange. Africa Yange, well, you know, he went to Bristol to do his masters. He came back and still participated in the national team. But remember, uh, actually, just to correct you, um, when Virgin Atlantic took over from EABL, EABL was the shirt sponsors mm -hmm. for Kenya Sevens. EABL used to give five million shillings a year. That was the sponsorship. Virgin Atlantic came in and bought 72,000 pounds. I think that's about 15 million shillings. They were in for about three, four years. Those were the Collins in general, Africa, younger years. So you're able to double up. You're able to go to school and you're able to earn a decent living from rugby, from playing rugby. Then Kenya Airways came in with 320 million shillings. All right? And, 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 and that deal was good enough to give these guys proper money, you know, proper salaries per month. It's very easy to... Uh, balance it too. I was having a chat with uh, Biko Adema sometime this year or last year and he was telling me and it's true until Biko finished his undergraduate degree Biko Adema never played in the Dubai and South Africa sevens because he was always doing exams so it's very possible to do it it's very possible to do it and rugby has been doing it over the years mm -hmm. all we're asking is remunerate these guys because the money the reason we do not have sponsors is because the sponsors do not trust Kenya Rugby Union Fine, Kenya Airways pulled out because they had issues. Kenya Airways had issues in themselves. But you remember back then in 2015, a director and the vice chairman then went ahead and abused a sponsor, Safaricom. Safaricom mm -hmm. called all their sponsors and they pulled out. I can tell you something, and this is me I'm talking, it's not conjecture, it's not hearsay, it's something I've actually had during the last election. I was sat with somebody, an EABL representative, who was there at the election. And after the election, he came and told me, look, you guys forget about our money. Because we can't touch you guys the way you are right now. You guys are in problems. That is EABL. Sport Pesa were there. Sport Pesa left. We keep on saying that they left because of tax issues. They didn't leave because mm -hmm. of tax issues. They left because the union could not account for the money. So that is the issue. Let us not... When, when the campaign was hot, current chairman, and I have nothing against him. I'm just... I, I have a problem with his style of leadership. I have nothing against the person. <laughs> That's what old gangler. He... He said that there's a narrative that is being pushed out there that the union is corrupt. Jeff Dangler, I want to tell you today, it is not us who are pushing the narrative. It is the corporate organizations mm -hmm. that you have dealt with who are pushing this narrative. They are the ones who are saying that the Kenya rugby union is corrupt, and as such, we cannot touch it with a 10-foot pole. Not because of anything else. Last year at the Kenya Open, the president, who by the way is the patron of the Kenya rugby union, 
and by the way, who played rugby? Who played rugby? Yeah. And you can see clearly he's distanced himself from rugby because of the shenanigans that are happening in the game. A game that he was very proud to be associated with. A game that you remember just after he was elected, he went to Impala Club to watch Kenya take on England in the in the in the Sevens World Cup semi-finals. So the president during last year's Kenya Open, he sat down and he said, "The reason why you guys are not getting the attention that golf is getting is because you are not running your federations well. It is not because of anything else." And look, golf are running their stuff well. So what happens? All the corporates come. And then government comes with even bigger money. That is the problem of the Kenya rugby union. It's not because guys are trying to paint a narrative. No. The issue is that there's lack of credibility at the union. Um, granted, Odor Gangla was not the chairman before, but he was in that board. Mm. And he was in the executive committee of that board. And there's nothing to show for that. You know, I sit down and I listen to some of the things they say. They talk about uh, the Kenya achieved number one status, or they won Singapore, the Singapore uh, Sevens in their time. That work didn't start with their time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that had, been that had been happening way before. They talk about the 15th team attaining position 22. Uro Gangla, it's not your board that appointed Jerome Pavard as the coach. It is Jerome Pavard as work. It is not your board that uh, put in the relationship uh, with the Western province because Kenya was able to gain from that. Now, as we speak today, Sami and Max, this year we only have one test in Kenya, mm. one international 15th test. And, 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 and I'm sorry, I I, to be, I hate it when we focus on sevens because sevens is not an income honor. It's not. Yes, it's for Kenya rugby. It's 15s, that's the, in, that's the income honor. World rugby gives us money based on how we perform in 15s. Now, this year we only have one test. And the reason we have one test is because of one simple thing. We're not performing like we are. Mm. We are. The reason why Hong Kong was coming, the reason why Germany was coming, the reason why all those international Spain, Spain were yeah. coming is because we had risen in the rank. We, had, we, had, we, were, we were rising in the rankings. At some point, we were number 22. So they sit down and say, hey, for us guys to rise in our rankings, we have to go beat these guys at their place. Right? In a year, we're having six, seven, ten tests. We've come back to one. One test. That is the end is against Uganda. No disrespect to Uganda. <laughs> I think I think they are the most entertaining but player in East Africa. We, 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 but no disrespect to Uganda. We are playing against Uganda now. We've gone back to where we were. Meanwhile, our competitors, Zim, are now participating oh. in the Super Sport Rugby Challenge. Something one of the candidates had actually promised to bring back. They are now participating in the Super Sport Rugby Challenge. These guys have a former Springbok coach in Peter De Villiers coaching them. These guys, last year alone, they pumped in a million dollars mm -hmm. for the 15th team alone. So, Maxwell was like, I can bet a mortgage I don't have yet. <laughs> that in the next one year, yes. we are going to be the whooping boys of rugby in Africa. From Let's percent. bet on that. And of course, away from politics of Kenya Rugby Union and the Federation in general, let's speak about what is happening in London Sevens. Uh, Great start, though, of course, uh, ending in a lose for Kenya against uh, Fiji 24-17. What do you make of the performance from Kenyan boys? Of course, phenomenal uh, show from, you know, Jeffrey Loach, who is the captain, mm -hmm. alongside his friend Bush Mwale, both, of course, featuring for local club, home boys rugby football club. What do you make of the start as far as London Sevens is concerned? Well, I would say it was a good start because um, if you look at Fiji, uh, Fiji is a team that has whipped us proper <laughs> in the past. Uh, so 24-17, just losing by a try and knowing that uh, the final minutes of the game we played a man less, so we played with six uh, six men, definitely that, that's something that we need to build up on. And uh, it also goes to show that uh, we can be able to fight relegation. Uh, though, um, and sorry to just throw a spanner in the works. Yes. I, I still think uh, the best thing that will happen to Kenyan rugby at the moment is for us to get relegated, for people to get uh, their so heads. So that the stakeholders yes. can go to the drawing board? Uh, the stakeholders, even the union. We, we just need these directors, and I'm, yes. uh, excuse my French, to just get their, asses, their heads out of their asses because yes. that's what is happening at the moment. So relegation for us would work. And you know, getting back uh, to mainstream series rugby will be a very tough task. Because if you look at uh, the promotion at the moment, the teams that are down there that try to get in, it's never a, a, an easy thing. Uh, if you look at especially what happened in Hong Kong this year, it wasn't easy. Yeah. So you, you're not even sure who's going to qualify and who's not. Zim has tried for the last three or four years <laughs> and they are still unsuccessful. And uh, I know this year they've beaten us in one of those uh, matches that they've appeared, where series that they've appeared, um, uh, as, um, as an invited uh, guest yeah. team, yeah. yeah. So, um, 
for me that that would, would work perfectly however uh, south africa has just done us a favor uh, in in beating uh, japan by 49 to 0 so um our loss the the, the margin in, in which we lost to uh, to fiji also helps us and what that means is we can be able to build on that we can actually now be able to beat samoa and france today and uh, if we make it to the main cup quarters uh, then uh, definitely we can say we are safe yeah. we don't even need to wait for party then it's okay, of course, I have seen you on Twitter, you are watching the program. You can also submit your, <laughs> your thoughts and feedback with regards to way forward as far as rugby is concerned. Of course, a reputable sports writer for the standard watching the program. Narwa Kamuya, the long-term solution, and of course you and Sami seem to be reading from the same script on the way forward as far as Kenya 7 is concerned. You want the team uh, relegated so that, you know, the stakeholders and rugby lovers in general can go to the drawing board to restore the lost glory of the national team. But... Getting relegated also means that uh, they will miss out on Olympic qualification. Mm -hmm. Double tragedy. You see, uh, sometimes it's good for the house to burn so that you can build it from mm -hmm. scratch. Um, rugby was, and just, just maybe to explain why, why we are in these problems. When, you take it ten, 10 years back, the people who are serving rugby were serving rugby to serve rugby. They were not there for their own selfish interests, okay? Now, I have uh, repeatedly told former KRU Vice Chairman, um, Sasha Mutai, that his biggest plus was his biggest minus. And that is when they brought money into the game, that's when everything went south. Everyone started focusing on making money. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem is. The seventh team became popular. The seventh team was making it to the quarterfinals, to the semifinals, to the finals of these tournaments. This meant that you know, increased number of tickets to travel. So these directors are just thinking about France, they're just thinking about Paris, they're just thinking about London. Samia will shock you, and this thing shocked me a lot. During the union elections, somebody allied to actually uh, current KRU president, without any shame, after the election just told me, ah, now it's about impunity. In fact, let me start planning my trip to Paris <laughs> and London. Already. Are you for real? Just the election was fresh, and now I'm not even ended. And somebody said that. So. I, I feel that the best way to save this situation, though drastic, is let's get relegated. Mm -hmm. Let the house burn. Then we start from scratch. Therefore, we see the guys who are actually in this game because of the love of the game. Because I feel that very many people who are involved in the game right now are just there because they see it's a cash cow. Or it was a cash cow then. Now the fans have dried up. Let us get relegated and then let's build. Yeah. Sami, your uh, opinion with regards to the overall run for the just getting concluded, the HSBC World 7 Series, what do you make? Has it been competitive enough and has it been full of that oomph, spice and ingredients that rugby requires? Max, Max. Yes. Um, I don't know whether you're being ironical <laughs> <laughs> or sarcastic. Yeah. No, I'm being realistic. Blood no, you're not, because uh, we all know uh, that these this time in the series we've not played well um we've had issues i remember um in dubai we we had our core team mm -hmm. yeah like in dubai and, and in cape town mm -hmm. but then after that problems started uh, the rain started hitting us and where did it start hitting us uh we had our core team players being told you know what you guys um we cannot be able to afford to pay you so can you guys take a pay cut uh, you're telling people to take a pay cut. People whose allowances you still have from the last season. Yeah, uh, these are people that you've not whose salaries have not been paid for more than five months. Yeah, uh, these are people who are now being told come renegotiate your contract, and it's contracts that have not been honored in the past. And the contracts that they had, as much as they do them um, on a on a on a rolling basis, like yes. they sign contracts every year. At the end of the day, you're not. I, I've never seen anywhere or in any sport where when you're renegotiating your contract, you take a pay cut. Even in employment. Even in employment. <laughs> it's never like that. Yeah. So it's supposed to improve, not you being told to take a pay cut. Then two, I do not know why we fired Namcos for Pau. And I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, and I'm was a past 100 point mark mm -hmm. for the 7th National the only last coach, season. The only coach. The only coach. The only coach who's ever done so. Yeah. We've had Mike Friday. We've had Benji. Uh, we had, we had Paul True. Yeah. Um, and I think the best before that was 99. Mm -hmm. So hitting 101 in itself was a very big thing and i remember uh, there were people who were complaining about namcos initially oh he had he did not have the experience um he, he they did not think he was the best coach for 
uh, Kenyan rugby, uh, sevens. But then he came in, he proved himself, then what do we do? We fire him for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. Then the person we appoint is somebody uh, who can be able to, uh, to be, is literally a marionette. Let me just put it that way. And uh, came fifth in the interviews, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, I was going to talk about there was, yeah. there was controversy about even how he was hired in the first place, because mm -hmm. uh, he was fifth. So, um, you go back to the whole narrative of who was pulling these strings? Why did they want this person here? This is somebody uh, who had a very big controversy, and, and I'm sorry to bring it back, uh, during the, Oli the Rio Olympics. Olympics yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's why even the president now stopped backing uh, yes. rugby because the only time that the rugby team went to state house, a lot of money was pumped in. Every player was like the second tier players were getting were supposed to get seven hundred thousand Kenya shillings. Uh, first tier players were getting one point two million. Some people ate that money and they started asking for kickbacks. Yes, the money was transferred to players' accounts. And I can tell you some of the ladies even pulled out of rugby. They just said, I'd rather pull out of rugby because I don't think I'll ever get such a, a, such a pay ever again yes. in my rugby career playing for Kenya. Yeah. I'd rather just stop playing rugby, walk away with my 700,000 and not give back 400. And, and you can imagine how greedy people can be. This is somebody who's been given and it's the government who's decided to um, give it as a gift because you've qualified for you, you've qualified for the Olympics uh, as to rugby teams they've decided to thank you then somebody comes and tells you you know uh, we are the ones who negotiated for you so uh, instead of we, the men were the ones who were supposed to get the money so you're telling the ladies instead of taking the whole 700 you take 300 give me 400 how greedy can you be yeah. but then there are several members of the fourth estate or uh, members of the press uh, locally are watching so you guys if you get quoted in the mainstream <laughs> and in the That's publications, okay. yes. especially after your scathing attacks <laughs> directed at the federation, yeah. <laughs> you no. don't get surprised. No. It's 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 conversation that's out there. Yes, uh, we are not saying we are quoting things that we have actually had or we have seen happen, and uh, it's it's the truth. Unfortunately, it's not pretty. It is not uh, good. Things are not uh, positive in the rugby society. And it's from top bottom. Even if you go to these clubs, there are serious problems. I actually support the same club as Sami does, and we also have problems at our club mm -hmm. level. So it's 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 a it's a very big problem in rugby, in terms of the leadership, in terms of the guys who are there, and just to echo the words of um, Nondis chairman Aoka Keshel, he actually said maybe it is good we get relegated. So that we get rid of all these people who got into the game just because of money. money because yeah. there are very many people who got into this game just because they thought there was money. So, Roger Sndegwa, uh, my brother from the people, you can go ahead and quote <laughs> either one of them, both Murai and Gara, good <laughs> to be quoted. And finally, your submission with regards to the Enterprise Cup final is coming up next in a few hours from now as we speak. Cabras, would they you know, bounce back from their beating <laughs> last weekend in Kakamega <laughs> in the hands of KCB and beating Palace Saracens? I think the only team that was able to beat uh, Cabras this season is KCB. KCB and yeah. I think the reason why KCB were able to do that is because of their mental framework. Uh, KCB have invested a lot in their players. Uh, they took their players to South Africa uh, at the beginning of the season for a 10 day camp, and a lot of their training was based on the mental strength and the mental capacity to handle knockout rugby. We have seen that. Now, Cabras, in terms of talent, they're up there. I look at their back line, you look at their backs. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Brian Tanga is injured. But you have a very able deputy in Brian, uh, Barry Robinson. You have Jonah Kubo at number 10. You have Kevin Keegan. Uh, you keep on sobbing at Queens because he went to Cabras <laughs> at 11. Then you have an explosive centre pairing at number 12, 13 of Nick Baraza and Mario Wilson. Then you have Felix Ayange, who we keep on mourning also as Queens, uh, that he went to Cabras at 14. Why didn't you talk about and, Nick as well? And I see Nick. Oh, yeah. And then Nick was also at Queens. And then you have the explosive, of mm. course, I think. By, by, in my books, the best player in East Africa, Philip Walker at 15. So it's going to be very tough for Impala. Uh, it's, going, it's going to be extremely tough for Impala to beat Cabras. Um, but it's, final, it, it's finals rugby. And I've seen the team that, um, that Impala have chosen. And uh, one name really strikes me at number 10. That's Nato Simiu uh, coming in at number 10. He's, oh, he's back. He's back from his injury. Yeah. At number 10. So if there's somebody who might be able to destabilize Cabras, it might be nature to see me, but I just think Cabras are too strong for Impala, and I think uh, Cabras are going to have it on the day. 
you and I, actually all of us were at the Ruaraka Sports Club during you know, the same finals clash between KCB and Queens. And of course, Pandits had uh, tipped you know, KCB to be the favorites to be the win of that particular tie. And yeah. so it happened. The same situation with Cabras now that it's been tipped by several of you? Well, um, can I first say I'm actually surprised that Impala were able to make it to the final. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the way they've been playing this season, um, especially in the Kenya Cup, they've not been playing very well. So um, what we are going to see is a proper thorough beating of Impala <laughs> by Cabras. And I'm sorry, I have so many Impala pals. I, I know who might even be watching me right now. But I'm sorry, There's no guys. upset. Uh, you know. I think I think you said that comment more as a queen. <laughs> no, no, no. Imagine it's not it's not more of a queen yeah, because but, um, I remember, especially when you played them uh, at the yes, backyard yes, um, yes. at Impala. In January, yes. I was shocked. As in, um, if you look at that game, mm. it was not competitive at all. True. It was not competitive. Yeah. And for once, I w when we were even talking with the Impala guys, I was like, what is happening to your team? The week before that, I'd, I'd watched them play Mwamba. Mwamba, yes. Yeah? Again, they got a thorough beating. Yeah. So, um, there was a lot of disorganization in that team, and there were a lot of things that were going wrong. So, it's not uh, just talking. Of course, there yes, is a queen, a queen perspective. Part, yeah. There is that. Yeah. But to be very, very honest, um, I don't see an upset. But I really also, don't. You also need, we also need to accept that. Granted, that was Impala during the season. The Impala, we saw play Harlequins at the third at the quarterfinals against so, K KCB. Well, no, the oh, Impala so, yeah. play Harlequins at mm. the quarterfinals. A much improved side, but like he's saying, it's going to be very tough to beat Cabras for Impala. Yeah, have been very shaky. Granted, they're in the final, but it's, again, on the other side, it's finals rugby, so you never know it's going to pan out. But my money is on KCB. It's Quality on Cabras, conversation. Cabras, it's no, been yeah. with the Turo <laughs> gentlemen, of course. Uh, I mean, Mariah, alongside Ngaro Kamu, are joining us to give their perspective with regards to what is happening at the London Seven second last leg of the HSBC World Seven Series, where Kenya is also in participation, having lost their first clash 24-17 against uh, Fiji, looking forward to bounce back and beat the opponents, uh, Samoa and France, respectively, so that they can improve their chances of not getting relocated contrary to how they want it done. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on board. Thank you for coming through. Hoping Sammy, to see, you, see at, you at the RFU. Yeah. 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 This guy has got some <laughs> big assignments. So he won't be yeah. 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 Pleasure doing this. Touchline mm. is the show. Y254 is the channel. Maxwell Wasika is my name. Don't go away. Stay tuned. We're still on.